All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Did you know that you are a wonderful person in your own right? That life has set a unique stamp of individuality on you? And that no one else can ever take your place in the scheme of things? No two persons have identical thumbprints. No two blades of grass are alike. No two leaves of a tree. No two snowflakes ever are identical. So often we single out some character in history or some person we know and think, how I wish that I might be like him. And yet this would be suicide to the real self. For if life had seen fit to make all of us just a little different, then we do not have to be exactly like others. If two people were exactly alike, one of them would be unnecessary in the scheme of things. Yes, you and I are individuals, but we are individuals rooted in one life, each drawing directly from it the power, the imagination, and the will to live as a personality of God, and to do this in a unique and a different manner. But of course, unity does not mean uniformity. We can live to give together in harmony and with cooperation without infringing on the rights of others. This is the real meaning of democracy and of personal freedom. If a thousand artists were painting the same landscape, no two drawings would be identical, for each would put something on his canvas that the landscape told him that it didn't tell anyone else. And so it is with everything we do. One of the great lessons of life is to learn to be yourself, to have confidence in the high impulses that come to you as an individual, and to know that a power greater than you are has willed you to be a little different from all the rest. If each is a unique personality, then it follows that all the power there is and all the presence there is is back of every individual. There is nothing monotonous in this great scheme of things which we call life, the power to live and the intelligence to know what to do exist at the very center of your being. And you didn't put it there. And you couldn't destroy it if you tried. The sensible thing to do is to accept it and work in cooperation with life. It is my personal conviction that there is a spirit of the real self that accompanies us through life but that we are only very dimly aware of it. There is an ancient fable which says that when the gods decided to create man and make him divine, they wished to hide his divinity in some place that would be difficult for him to discover. And so they held a consultation in which one of the gods said, let us hide man's divinity in the air. But another one replied, no. Someday he will create a machine and fly through the air and discover his divinity. And yet another god suggested that man's divinity should be hidden at the bottom of the sea, while another said, no, we have given man such power and such an imagination that someday he will make a machine that will penetrate the depths of the ocean. And so after much discussion, they all agreed that the best place to hide man's divinity, the place where he would be least likely to look for it, would be deep within himself, deep within man. For they said, he will always be looking outside himself, and he will never think that the thing he is looking for, he already has. And so they hid his divinity at the very center of his being and left him alone to discover it. But always there was an urge in him, a feeling that there is something still undiscovered, something that could make everything right if he knew how to find it and how to use it. And it was this divine thing within him that Jesus discovered, his intimate and individual relationship to the one living spirit. It was this that gave him the power he had. And all the miracles he performed and all the wonderful signs that followed his life were evidence enough that he had laid hold of a power 
that other people knew nothing about, yet they already possessed the things which they were looking for in someone else. And don't you think this must be what Jesus meant when he said that it is neither in the mountain nor at Jerusalem but within yourselves that you must discover the real kingdom, the actual spark of life, the pattern of your own divinity. How true it is that we have searched everywhere. We have traveled far and near and searched high and low to find that something that can make us whole and give us joy in living. And seldom indeed has anyone realized that the wonderful person he is, the thing he is really looking for, is really the divinity already hidden within himself. And this is God's good man. Isn't it true that even many of our success stories are but very weak examples of how we should imitate others? Do they really teach us that there is a deep self which does not have to imitate anyone? You can read Shakespeare all your life and never become Shakespeare. You can be familiar with all the poems ever written without being able to produce three verses that are original. You can imitate all the great actors and still give a poor performance. This alone should teach us that imitation is suicide. You and I will have to learn how to live by living. We have lived too much by imitation. Now let's try a new experiment. Let's make up our minds that God, the supreme intelligence, has hidden within each of us the essence of his own being and let us alone to discover it and in discovering it to find ourselves. First of all, we must have a conviction there is such a real self hid behind this mask that we are wearing. You and I did not implant this divinity within us this is the gift of life. How can you account for those inner strivings you have, the feeling that stirs within you, unless it is an echo of some deep self wishing to become revealed? You see, life has made us individuals.